Up next, we have Lavinia Menyon. Words are weird. They're just alphabets which we created that are completely and utterly devoid of any meaning by themselves. Let's take the word tree. When I say the word tree, an image of a wooded, leafy plant manifested in your head. A tree. I want you to look at the word tree there. It's just T-R-E-E. -E. Three letters of the alphabet strung together by some linguist none of us know. And yet, every single one of you in the audience knows exactly what I mean when I say the word tree. And yet, to a person who doesn't speak English, or cannot read the alphabet, these are just meaningless scribbles. Utterly meaningless. Because only by uniting sound image and concept will the word tree conjure up an image in your head. Like I said, weird, isn't it? Now that's just communication in itself. We use words to think, to convey, to articulate ourselves clearly. We spend so much time and effort in school learning words and using words just so we are able to elucidate our ideas as coherently as possible. And then we invented poetry, but that's another story. It makes no sense, does it? Except it does. I love writing. I really do. Yes, I dislike my essays. Yes, I laugh at my old diary entries. And yes, I cringe at my fan fiction, old and new alike. But all in all, I think it's safe for me to say I love all writing. Now don't get me wrong, just because I say I love writing doesn't mean I'm good at it. And I think that's where most of us struggle. Well, let me start off with this. I am a pro. Allow me to demonstrate my point. I am perhaps nine years old at this point. I have successfully conquered all five books of the Percy Jackson series with an extra year to dive extra year to spend diving into the world of fan fiction. Then, at the ripe age of 10, I start writing my own fan fiction. And boy, was that a ride. I couldn't look away from the freckles that spread across his cheeks. It wasn't anything special, but the fact that it was him made it special. That was an excerpt of chapter 54 of one of my Percy Jackson fan fictions. And that was one of the good ones. <laughs> After about 50 pages of that in Comic Sans size 14, not 12, and um, 120 chapters published online, I considered myself a professional at writing fan fiction. After all, I had about 120,000 reads. Okay, not to brag, but like I was on the top page for recommended Percy Jackson fan fictions. You could say I was thriving, except it was on Wattpad, so not really. So yes, I am a fan fiction writer, the scum of the writing world. I am the product of wishful thinking and controversy regarding the use of the intellectual properties of others. I am the embodiment of the litany of bad writing tropes and cliche plot twists you hate and it's not even a dream. So if I can tell you that writing fan fiction has aided me in various areas of my life, I'm telling you any, and I mean any, other form of writing will help you in your life. Poetry, yes, even poetry. Writing isn't going to make your English grades go up. Well, it will, but that isn't what I'm talking about here. It's going to impact the way you see the world alongside how the world sees you. I might come off as dramatic, but the only reason it sounds dramatic is because you don't see it. You don't see it yet. Because the more you write, the easier it is to translate that mental picture inside your head into words. And when you are able to do that, you can think clearer, faster, deeper. You are able to communicate with clarity, and you'll start thinking, whoa, I just used the word ostentatious. How cool is that? And it is, in fact, cool, because you know a word 90% of the population doesn't. 
Recently, I wrote a research paper regarding the decline in quality of fiction. And let me tell you, we are losing vocabulary faster than Jane Austen wrote writes her novels. And for those of you who don't know, that's really fast. Ironic, isn't it, how we discover things about writing through writing? Writing simply allows us to gain an awareness of reality like this. We have words to express what we want to, and by recording it down, either on paper or on our devices, it doesn't matter. We are able to relive those moments. Writing is the only time travel device we have and will ever have that doesn't come with any nasty butterfly effects. Compare, uh, forget Back to the Future too. It is the only device that has helped us constantly throughout history. Rereading a diary or setting future goals, it allows us to prepare while reliving ex past experiences. Or whether, where, whether it is to overcome a tough spot or to prepare a tough spot, it's better to have some form of organization in your mental headspace. Because repeating negativity in your head like a mantra, what has that ever done for you? Speaking of being organized, guess what you're going to have to do when working for any sort of organization? Write. Emails, pitches, presentations, I guarantee you, you are without a doubt going to be using writing. Generally speaking, people who do better at writing also do better in the business world. And like, what better way to do better at writing than writing? It utilizes your intelligence, your education, and hones your critical thinking skills. And the best part is you're still not even aware that it's happening. The benefits of writing are limitless, yet still underrated. It doesn't matter what age you are, whether you're old and gray or running around in your youth. As long as you are writing, I can guarantee you, I can bet you, that your cognitive functions are more efficient and faster than others your age. And why wouldn't you want that? Writing stimulates your brain cells and improves your memory. And I could stand here and list every single benefit of writing if you wanted me to, but we'd be here all day and nobody wants that, so. With all these benefits, you'd think it's only logical for us all to write. But with all the commitments we have in life, we just can't. I mean, you write enough in school, right? No, not really, we really don't. <sighs> Earlier, I mentioned that I was a pro. Well, I didn't finish. I'm a procrastinator. It took me four years to get to the end of my fan fiction, not because I was a perfectionist, and not because I was slaving away every week with homework typing up my fan fictions. It was because one day, I just said, hey, I have writer's block. I'll just do this tomorrow. And that tomorrow never came. And by reaching the end of my fan fiction, I mean, I turned 13 and decided that it was too cringy for this world, and I deleted it. How relatable. As the main adversary of writing, I would say that procrastination is our biggest enemy. I'm willing to bet that the majority of people who like writing don't, simply because of this P word. It's ridiculous to me how many of us fall into this trap, including me. Now, I'm not going to be the first person to tell you that procrastination is the enemy of productivity. But I might be the first to tell you that it is possible to procrastinate efficiently. It is pointless for me to tell you to stop procrastinating because those of you who can, will. At some point in your lives, you will realize that procrastinating is stupid and you will stop. But for a third of you in this room, you will continue to habitually procrastinate for the rest of your life. And for you, my message will be futile. So, I'm just going to say this. Telling the chronic procrastinator to just do it is like telling a clinically depressed person to cheer up. Futile. So, like I said, I'm not going to tell you to stop procrastinating when you don't want to write. I'm going to tell you to procrastinate productively. You have writer's block? Lie down. Stop cleaning your room for the first time in a year because you don't want to write that chapter. Lie down and think. What do you want to happen? What do you not want to happen? Scribble it down and get to work. Write the scenes you want to. Write the scenes you don't want to. Write why the sky is blue. Is it even blue? It doesn't matter what you write. You don't even need to use what you write. Just fill in the gaps and it will flow. 
and if it doesn't flow, write until it flows. As a capstone student with a fixed deadline for my project, procrastination was simply not possible for me. I had 20 days to finish my project, starting on the first day of November and ending on the 20th. Hence where I met my second nemesis, control issues. For my capstone project, I took on the task of starting a novel I had been planning in my head for a while. Before I started, boy, let me tell you, I was excited. I was generating character portraits, typing out outlines and character profiles. You could even say I, I started my own fandom with all the fan art I made. But then November 1st hit, and I couldn't think of anything. Despite the pages and pages worth of outline I had, I could not write a single word down that I did not hate. So I thought, hey, I'll just do it tomorrow. And this time I didn't procrastinate, okay? The next day, I pick up my computer and I type. I type and type and type aimlessly, knowing very well I'm not going to use any of what I type. This continues for a week. And now I'm 10 pages behind. Not good. Control issues are the enemy of every writer. Not every writer may procrastinate, but every writer with a love for his works will have control issues. He will write and write and write and write until he is satisfied with the words staring back at him. He will type and type and type until he cannot recognize the words staring in front of him. Then he starts debating because how did these words even come to form? Because they're so weird. They're just the word the, how do you even come up with the word the? Now he stared at it for so long, he understands it just as much as a rat understands quantum physics. It's a real, it's a real phenomenon called semantic satiation. As if English wasn't hard enough, now we're bringing in psychology, great. But again, a writer's best editor is his own insecurity. In the words of Thomas Mann, a writer is, for someone, is someone for whom writing is more difficult than it is for anyone else. Ironic, isn't it? It's important to be critical of your work. In fact, it is good to be critical of your work. It is the only way you will ever improve. It is only when you are being so critical that you are not getting anything done that you need to stop and adjust your mindset. You can always edit a bad page. What you can't do is edit a blank page. I started writing my eighth draft of my first chapter on the seventh day of November. I didn't like it, safe to say, but I continued anyway. I was living the fake it till you make it lifestyle until like chapter two, and then suddenly I was liking what I was putting down. Everything was coming together and it was becoming something I could work with. Don't get me wrong, I still didn't love it, but the more I was able to put down, the more I started to be okay with what I had. In this way, you need to relinquish control. You aren't going to know what you want to write every time you have an idea. You just need to keep at it. When my project due date arrived, I was staring at a reflection of 20 days worth of work. It wasn't the best thing ever, but it also wasn't the worst thing ever. I can't say I was a thousand percent proud of it, but I can say I loved it. I loved my idea, I loved my writing style, and I knew I could do better with more time. And that was fine. This is the third enemy of writing, putting your passion in the right place. Ernest Hemingway's most famous quote is probably this one. There is nothing to writing. All you do is sit down at a typewriter and bleed. Aside from the fact that the majority of people who reference this quote are emo girls on Tumblr, I'd like to disagree. One, because we don't use typewriters anymore, but also because there is a lot to writing when you are writing for yourself. You're not writing to please anyone but yourself. It doesn't matter if you're blogging or journaling, as long as you feel like a part of yourself is being reflected through your words, you are growing. So it is up to you as an individual to choose what form of writing works best for you, which method of expression fits your personality. Are you an abstract person? Poetry. Do you prefer structure and plot? Narrative fiction. It's a matter of discovering what part of this world is best for you. 
of course there are going to be people that don't like writing. And while I cannot force you to pick up a pen and start writing down your goals in life, that is exactly what I urge you to do. Writing may seem tedious, and it is actually, very, but once you get past the fact that you will never be perfect at writing or the best at writing, it really is enjoyable. The way our minds are structured, whether you rely more on your left brain or your right brain, writing is the bridge between that, connecting logic and creativity to bring out your full potential. And writing should be just that, a tool you use to help you grow to the fullest extent. Yes, it may just be words on a page. Yes, you may be the only one to ever read those words, but it doesn't change the fact that it is your voice behind your words. It is your thoughts, your ideas that will outlive you and be proof of your growth. So I implore you, live, laugh, love, but write it down. Thank you. Uh, we're going to take just a quick 10-minute intermission right now. So get up and stretch, and then we'll be back with two more speakers.